Hi, my name is Ko and I am with the Institute of Electronics at Graz University of Technology. Today I want to talk about the TEM cell, the GTEM cell and the IC stripler method. Those methods are commonly used to characterize electromagnetic emissions of integrated circuits, but can be used for electronic systems as well. Therefore, please keep in mind, although my slides are prepared to show IC level tests, those techniques can also be used for whole systems. After watching this video, you will understand the basics of measuring electromagnetic emissions of an IC. When characterizing emissions of integrated circuits, the IEC 61967 standard is often referred to. This standard contains multiple subparts and proposes different methods to characterize both radiated and conducted emissions. Please take care of the term radiated emissions, as the measurement procedures discussed today are typically done in the near field and not within the far field. Therefore, I will call those emissions electromagnetic emissions. Today's topic discusses part 2 and part 8 of that standard, the TAM cell and the IC strip line method. I want to start off by explaining the test PCB. Part 1 of the standard defines some general conditions, for example, how this PCB should look like. Most importantly, the DUT, the device under test, or here our IC under test, must be placed alone on one plane. All the other components must be placed on the opposite plane. It is recommended to use a four layer PCB where both outer layers carry the ground potential. In addition, the edges of the PCB must be tinned or gold plated. The PCB is rectangular in order to be able to turn it by 90 degrees after each measurement, as the measured emissions depend on the orientation. We will see in a minute why these conditions are that important. Beforehand, let us talk about why we need special measurement techniques for characterizing the emissions of an IC. Why we don't measure our DOT inside an anechoic chamber, as we have seen in another video. The reason is quite simple. The emissions produced from our test PCB will dominate over the emissions produced from our IC. In this video, we are interested in doing a chip level test, not a system level test. This brings me to the first measuring method, the TEM cell. On the photo here, you can see such a TEM cell. It has one connection on each side. One will be connected to an EMI receiver, whereas the other is terminated by 50 ohms. On the top, you can see a big opening. This is the place where the test PCB will be put on, with the IC showing inside the cell. The edges of that opening are made out of a copper to obtain a low ohmic contact to the ground potential of our test PCB. What you can see inside the cell on the photo isn't the floor, but the septum instead. In a second, I will show the cross section of the cell to get a better understanding of that structure. The main idea of a TAM cell is to place our IC inside the coaxial cable where the end of that cable is terminated by 50 ohms. To do this, we need to widen that cable in a way that only our IC fits inside. Here, the TAM cell comes into play. As the layer next to the IC is connected to ground potential, the IC is shielded from the environment outside of the cell. Now, if we power up our IC, an electric field will point between the IC and the septum in the middle of the cell. Additionally, since some current will flow in loops inside of the IC, a magnetic field will curl through that septum. Both 
the E and H field are perpendicular to each other and as long as only the TAM mode is present, the energy flux is also perpendicular to them. This is the origin from where the TAM cell has its name, as TAM stands for Transverse Electromagnetic. As electric and magnetic field couple into the septum, voltages and currents are produced within septum and case. Those can now be measured with an EMI receiver. However, because of a physical discontinuity on the edges, there are some high frequency reflections which limit this measuring procedure to approximately 2 to 3 GHz. According to the standard, measurements are only valid as long as the voltage standing wave ratio is below 1.5. On this slide, I have plotted the TAM cell from the top perspective as well. If you plan to build your own TAM cell, you need to keep the dimensions in a certain relation to ensure a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms. Otherwise, you cannot ensure a voltage standing wave ratio below 1.5 due to reflections. There are some papers which propose the characteristic impedance of such geometric structures. As we have discussed the TEM cell, let us continue with the GTEM cell. As mentioned before, TEM cells are limited in the maximum frequency because of the edges, which are responsible for reflections. Therefore, why don't we get rid of those edges? This can be done by cutting the TEM cell after a third and flattening and extending that structure. If we now terminate our structure with 50 ohms and place some RF absorbers, we have built our GTEM cell. The letter G stands for gigahertz as it allows us to measure up to 18 gigahertz. I have tried to sketch a GTEM cell here. On its pyramidal ending, we can connect that cell to an EMI receiver. In red, we can see the septum. The end of the septum is terminated by 50 ohms. On the back side of the GTEM cell, there are numerous RF absorbers placed, which are preventing reflections from the back. A special notch is necessary to place the test PCB. If the distance between IC and septum is chosen equally, as in the TEM cell, the results of both methods can be compared meaningfully. For system level tests, there is a door where you can place your EUT, your equipment under test, inside. EUT is just another fancy way to designate your test object. Also, please read the manual of the GTEM cell manufacturer carefully, as there is only a specific test volume allowed where the EUT must be placed. Only in that volume, far field conditions are simulated. For example, the electric field and the magnetic field are perpendicular to each other. Only then, measurements done in this near field are comparable with the typical measurements done in the far field, as we have seen in our video about semi-anechoic chambers. Finally, we can discuss the IC strip band method and we will see that it does not differ from the TAM cell very much. The idea here is to reduce the height between septum and DUT. In this way, there is a more efficient coupling of the electric and magnetic field. On the photo here, you can see a shielded version of the IC strip line. You can see the septum as a golden plate and how small the distance between IC and septum is compared to the TEM cell. The IC strip line method can also be done in an unshielded version, as you can see on the top figure. The main principle is the same as in the TAM cell. Both the electric and the magnetic field are responsible for voltages and currents within that structure. Same as with the TAM cell, we need to ensure two conditions. First, a characteristic impedance of 50 ohms defined by its physical dimensions. And second, a voltage standing wave ratio, 
now below 1.25 according to the standard. As the main difference to the TAM cell is the cell height, both measurement results can be compared after adding a correction factor. For instance, if the distance between PCP and septum is equal to 6.7 mm within a strip line and 45 mm within a TAM cell, one only needs to add or subtract 16.5 decibels to switch between both results. But be careful, as this correction factor is just an approach. It is recommended to consider an additional uncertainty factor, for example, plus minus 3 decibels. To sum up the IC strip line method, the decreased distance to the septum leads to a better coupling with both electric and magnetic field. This property becomes especially handy when performing immunity tests. Way less power is needed from the power supply to generate the same electrical field strength. But immunity tests are a topic for another day. Okay, we are now here at the lab of the Institute of Electronics and today I want to show you a little bit about the TAM cell method here. First, I have prepared a test PCB here. So you can see that on one plane we have our DOT, our device under test or our IC under test and this is the only component on that plane. All the other components which are necessary to drive that I see are located here on the other side of the PCB. As you can also see, the edges of our PCB are gold plated. So this is necessary to obtain a low ohmic contact with the TAM cell here. So now let's put this circuit on the TAM cell. So first we can open the TAM cell here mechanically and here there is just a dust protection for our TAM cell with no PCBs on it. And then we can place our, our PCB here and fix it mechanically. And now we have a low ohmic contact with the TAM cell. So the potential here is the same as the ground potential on the PCB. And now, we can power up our PCB with a 9 volt battery here on the top side. So now the IC is powered up and is in always on mode. And now you can see on one side of the TAM cell it's terminated with a 50 ohms um, termination resistor and the other side is here connected to an EMI receiver. And beforehand, I have just taken a measurement of the TAM cell itself, so when the dust protection was on it, and here we can see that no emissions were measured with the EMI receiver. But now, let's run the test, and let's see if we can measure some emissions produced by the IC on the back side of the PCB. Okay, we can see here the first peak was measured here, then on the double of the frequency we can measure another peak, and now again on the next a multiple of the, of the base frequency here, and so on and so on. So this spectrum looks terrible. So we can measure a lot of emissions produced by the IC here. So just for proving, I will now power off our IC and run the scan again. And we hopefully won't see any emission now. So it must be here at this point, I guess. But it seems really good now. So here is, there are no emissions anymore. Okay then, I hope you liked the short clip about the TAM cell and I hope that you have learned something new. But anyways, thanks for watching.